It ain't no joke being yoked. And you can't be jacked if you're on crack. You don't want to be weak and you don't want to look like a geek. So make sure you have a plan to get tan. This is Mark Bell from Super Training TV, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West, answering more questions today for the Power Project brought to you by HowMuchYouBench.net, the Slingshot, and the only freaking strength magazine in the world, the Power Magazine. Dot com. Make sure you subscribe to Power Magazine right now because the next issue is going to have Stan the Rhino efforting on the cover. He's the only person to, to do a double cover. He's been on the cover in the past and uh, recently did a 2303 total. And therefore, I think that's good enough to get him on the uh, cover again. And he's pretty much for now anyway, retired from uh, powerlifting. And so I, fe I felt it was a good way to kind of send him off. But the question for today is very important. It has taken me a while to even try to tackle it. This question is more loaded than the back of my shorts right now. This question is about <clears throat> where do I start off if I'm a newbie? If I'm new to the sport, if I'm new to strength training, if I'm new to the gym, if I'm new to fitness, where in the F do I start? How do I get started? Where do I begin? What program do I select? And this guy, you know, sounds like he's doing a little bit of research, but he was kind of asking about, you know, do I start off with 531? Do I start off with West Side? Do I start off with the Cube? Normally, if you at least are aware of those programs, that's a good indication. And this may so sound extremely self centered and, uh, and funny, but I always say, like, if somebody doesn't know who I am, and if I rattle off another coach or two, and they don't they don't know who Jesse Burdick is, and they don't know who uh, Kelly Starrett is, or they don't know who Louis Simmons is, I automatically assume after that that they don't know shit. They don't know where to start, and they're certainly not going to know where to begin if they set foot into a gym. So the fact that you already are aware of some of these other programs, that is a great start right there. I was talking to a friend the other day, a friend that I assisted in losing uh, about 50 pounds so far. Jay, you're my boy, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, Jay said, he had a profound statement, and I love hearing these statements from people that are getting motivated and people that are getting fired up. And he said he used to DJ back in the day, and uh, he'd have people come up to him and say, you know, yo, dude, that other, you're doing a good job. The other DJ, you know, that other guy's weak. The other guy sucks. And Jay, rather than focusing in on negativity, he brought some positive, he sh shed some positive light on the situation, which is very important for all of you to do, and is very important in your effort to get started and to get headed in the right direction, and that's not to hate on others, and to focus in and to hone in on yourself and what you should be doing. But Jay said, hey, you know what, that may be true. And I might not be the best DJ myself, but I'm doing it. And that's the key right there. The fact that you're asking about how to get started, that's a good, that's a good indication that you want to get started. Now the next step is just a step foot inside of a gym. Now, a lot of people are going to say, oh, you know, I don't like my gym. My gym sucks. You know, they don't have, they don't, we don't have a monolift. We don't have, you know, the, the, all the stuff that Bell's Gym has, Super Training has, you know, all the bells and whistles that you guys have. Well, I'm here to tell you is those things are great, but you don't need them. You don't need anything. All you need is some heart and some desire to want to get yourself better. So whatever your goal is, whether your goal is strength, whether your goal is to look better in the mirror, or whatever your goal is, all you need to have is the desire to do it. So if you're limited on equipment and stuff like that, that's not going to be a major factor in the reason why you can't make progress. Do not blame others for your lack of success. Take control of your life today. Get your ass inside the gym and start managing, start managing your body and start taking control of your fitness and control of your strength levels. So let's let's talk about where to get started and how to get started. First things first, do not be afraid to ask other people for help. 
The fact that you're asking me for help is a nice step in the right direction, but you're going to have to ask someone locally uh, for help. Uh, if you're kind of unaware of who's good, walk into a gym, 5 o'clock on Monday, maybe 5.30, scan the gym, look for the biggest, most jacked dude who's moving around the most weight, the guy, guy who doesn't look like an asshole, and go over to him and say, hey, excuse me, I want to know what's going on over here. I, I would like to one day, you know, be built like yourself, or I, I want to build myself up. Uh, I'll pay you for your time. How, how do I go about doing it? Um, a lot of times, a lot of times, guys will just show you some stuff for free, uh, especially uh, if you're not if you're not uh, arrogant and you're polite and you ask in a nice way. And don't catch them uh, when they're about to handle 150 pound dumbbells. Uh, try to catch them uh, in, in between time. You can also utilize a personal trainer. You can also go to a local CrossFit gym. Now I know some of you are going to bash me out there um, for saying that, but some of the CrossFit gyms have some decent coaches, and they can at least uh, give you some advice on uh, on some of the. At least they have a good setup to go in there and do some deadlifting, a decent setup to go in there and do some squats and cleans and and um, and those types of things. If Olympic lifting is something that you're looking into, that might be a good route to go. Most of the good CrossFits that I've been in. Uh, not only have some decent coaches there for CrossFit, uh, but they usually have a fairly or highly skilled um, Olympic lifter in their facility. Highly skilled for an American anyway. We know how that goes. American lifters don't have a lot of success in the Olympics. But the point is, is that these people are seeking out uh, better information and better people themselves so they provide that service in their very own gym and they have those types of people you can also go on a website like powerliftingwatch.com and you can kind of scan that and look for powerlifting gyms more than likely if you find a powerlifting gym you're going to run into some decent powerlifters another great thing to do is to go to a powerlifting meet and start talking to some people and try to figure out who's like the strongest guy here like and what does he do and what's his deal where does he live? What does he eat? How do I get involved? How do I, how do I uh, communicate with this guy so I can get myself stronger? So those are some of the things you're going to have to do starting out. Now, in terms of the actual uh, sets and reps and those types of things, uh, what I would advise you to do is to go into a gym. Commercial gyms are great. They always get bashed, but commercial gyms are great, especially if you find a good one. A lot of them provide a lot of equipment. They got hammer strength, Cybex, they got the whole thing going on. They got a lot of cable pieces, and let's face it, we've all started out on some of that stuff. And that's how you get jacked in the first place, isn't it? You do get jacked by doing squats, you do get jacked by doing deadlifts, and you do get jacked by doing bench, but you also need some of that fluffer stuff too to make you even more jacked. So what I would advise you to do is to work with sets of 10 on just about everything you can think of. Every exercise that you can think of, work with three sets of 10 on, and always stay, at least for the first few months of training, stay within your means. Don't try to lift too heavy. Don't If you're doing a bench press and it starts going like this, reduce the weight. Three sets of 10, like this. Your uh, last rep should look very similar to your first. Your last rep of your last set should look very similar to your first. Work on squats, bench press, and deadlift. If a squat is a very difficult thing for you to perform, then there is a progression that you can do. You can do body weight squats for a little while. You could do body weight squats onto a high bench or a high box. You can do, um, you can then progress to using a barbell. After using a barbell, you can, uh, if you're having trouble with depth and stuff, you can squat onto a high box. There's some progressions you can use. Use your head if things are difficult for you. If anything hurts, don't do it. You're not ready for it. If you try to get on some sort of machine, you're like, wow, that machine really hurts my shoulder. You know, I've seen videos of, uh, of Kai Green using this machine, and I, I'm going to use it too, and it tears your shoulder up, then don't, don't use it. Don't worry about it for now. Um, that's another thing to do is get onto YouTubes 
and watch some inspirational footage of some of these guys. Kai Green has some outstanding footage out there of him training and him lifting. But listen to some of these guys. They really have some valuable information. Now, when you do your three sets of 10, what I'd like you to do is about three seconds on the way down and three seconds on the way up. One, two, three. One, two, three. Make sure you're breathing steady. Make sure the weights, keep the weights light in the beginning. You're new. This is for people that are brand new. And for people that are brand old, <laughs> there's something to, be, something to be learned about all this. And that is the fact that going back to the basics can always help you. Uh, and, and, and using control while lifting weights can help anybody, no matter how advanced they are. If you're an advanced lifter and you decide that you want to control 700 pounds a little bit better than you did the week before, sometimes just by doing the lift better, you can create a better stimulus. It doesn't always have to be more weight. There's also nothing wrong with practicing. There's no, I did Yesterday I did a bunch of sets of practice, I call them practice pulls, practice deadlifts. I worked on it for like an hour. I feel I got a ton out of it. And you know what? I'm sore as shit. You want to know how much weight I used? It's very embarrassing, but I used about 225. I eventually got my way up to about four plates or so. Uh, but anyway, regardless of how many plates are on there, even four plates is embarrassing for a uh, full-time powerlifter. But the point is I was working on my form and working on my technique, and that's what you're going to need to do when you're starting out. You do not want to develop any bad habits at all. Uh, so you want to keep training within your means. Brandon Lilly has a book called The Cube Method. Jim Wendler has a book called 531 or 135 531 <laughs> it's the name of his book that's an outstanding book west side barbell has some great information out there however i do think that a lot of times it can confuse guys that are newer to the to the training system so 531 or the cube louis simmons also has a book called the west side book of methods for those that you want to dive in a little deeper but like i said That'll confuse many of you. I would stick with Brandon Lilly's Cube Method or 531 by Jim Wendler. Now, how do I eat? Let's try to simplify this a little bit and just try to cut out junk. For those of you that are new out there, I'm going to make it very simple. No more drinks with sugar in them. No more drinks with any carbohydrates in them whatsoever. No more fruit juice. No more soda. You're an athlete. You're trying to turn over a new leaf. You're trying to become an ass kicker. Ass kickers don't drink their calories. They eat their calories. So let's get rid of all that junk. Let's not worry too much about supplements and let's supplement ourselves with steak and eggs and chicken and those types of things. As far as carbohydrates are concerned, try to stick to natural forms of carbohydrates. Slower digesting carbohydrates, any form of a potato will do. Uh, rice is okay, brown or white. Um, avoid bread, avoid fruit. Uh, a little bit of fruit is okay because actually, um, so I'm sorry, you shouldn't avoid fruit necessarily. I basically just meant fruit juice. Um, and, uh, you know, enjoy some vegetables. Eat as many vegetables as you'd like. Um, and that's pretty much it. One gram of protein per pound of body weight, one gram of carbohydrates per pound of body weight if you feel like you're fairly lean. If you're not lean, half a gram of carbohydrates per pound of body weight per day. Um, you can also, on non-training days, if you want to try to tighten up a lot, non-training days, don't eat any carbs. On training days, eat one gram per pound of body weight. Uh, if you're fat, eat half a gram per pound of body weight on training days of carbohydrates. How much fat? Just make sure you're eating healthy fats. Don't actually count your fats. Uh, you got coconut oil. You got fish oil. Uh, those things can be crucial. Uh, other supplements that I'm a fan of would be vitamin D3, uh, just because I've noticed that I don't get sick anymore. Um, and, uh, you know, a good multivitamin. I take one from Muscle Farm called Armor V. I'm a fan of that. But in terms of, like, all the other supplements and stuff, you find a decent form of whey protein that you like. That's okay. Um, but don't worry too much about pre-workout drinks and post-workout supplementation and stuff for now. Let's just keep it really basic for now. You're in it for the long haul. This is not, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. And this is a decision that you made. Uh, 
to yourself. So dedicate yourself to it. Allow it to take the time that's necessary for you to get better. It's not going to take a couple days. It's not going to take a couple weeks. It's not going to take a couple months. And even after a couple of years, when you feel like you're doing pretty good, you will still be unsatisfied with how strong you are uh, and your level of conditioning. But you get to keep working at it, and that's what makes a lot of this so fun. So there's some tips. I'll probably do a part two of this at some point. Um, those are some books to reference. I told you to reference YouTube as well. You have um, uh, Carb Night and Carb Backloading from John Kiefer off of a website called DangerouslyHardcore.com. There's also another website called T Nation, which has outstanding information. And let's not forget supertraining.tv. T Nation has some pretty good information as well. Uh, Elite FTS has some great information out there. If you really want to try the conjugate system more so than anything else, um, there's a great article written by Dave Tate called The Periodization Bible, Part 1 and 2. That'll lead you down a good path. But the good news for all of you out there, all the fans out there, is that I have started to write a book. I've never read a book, so I decided to write one. And uh, that'll be shared with you guys, hopefully in the next few months. I just started, so the process is probably going to take a while. Partly due to the fact that I'm retarded. Anyway, what the hell is I going to say? Multiply your muscle, multiply your hustle. Strength is never a weakness, and that is it from supertraining.tv.